Hello guys, welcome back. My name is Andrei. Lately I'm busy on UI implementation for our ML product called Skipper. I'm using uh, Django and uh, rendering UI with Django. So I'm not using any front-end uh, toolkit like React or something like that. Uh, rather than that, <clears throat> I'm using uh, Django HTML templates, uh, render templates and UI is implemented with Tailwind and with uh, Flowbyte. Because I believe in our case, it will be more productive to render uh, data structures directly from the server uh, without uh, introducing this intermediate layer with the communication for the REST services. Yeah, let's see how it goes. Uh, today I'd like to uh, talk about Flowbyte and uh, uh, give you an update and show how uh, we, we keep using Flowbyte components and how we implement, implemented the design for the screen which would uh, uh, help users in the future to annotate and map data uh, from the invoices, receipts and so on and uh, assign labels to this data and uh, yeah, basically this would be the training uh, input data uh, uh, it will be uh, this data will be a result of this this mapping. Yeah, so let's uh, jump to the screen, and first of all, let's go for the uh, Flowbyte uh, website. Uh, they have the option to go to explore components, and you can go and and check uh, components from this uh, overview screen. Or another option is to go directly to the documentation, which I actually prefer. And from here you have a list of components. So up to now we're using an accordion component, which um, helps to, uh, if you have a lot of stuff on the screen, uh, with accordion you can hide and show parts of the screen and this would allow you to save, to save the space. Yeah, then obviously using buttons, uh, cards. Uh, card is, is a nice um, UI uh, block from uh, Flowbyte. It, it helps to uh, group different uh, parts of the screen into separate uh, cards and uh, make uh, make it more user friendly to the user to understand uh, where uh, different form elements belong and so on. Yeah, then drop downs for using uh, form elements, obviously. Then uh, tabs, navigation bar, and so on and so on. Uh, tables we are also using and. Yeah, from uh, like uh, select components, uh, checkboxes, and so on. Uh, at this moment, we are not uh, fetching any real data. Uh, at this moment, UI is implemented more like a prototype, and we are trying to assemble a set of different flow byte components, which are based on Tailwind, and to understand how our UI would look like. As soon as we will finish this uh, prototyping UI implementation, then we'll start the next phase uh, with Django. We'll build a, a data model in Django and probably we'll use HT HTMX library uh, to dynamically fetch content uh, from Django into the HTML templates and render them. Yeah, so let's see how the screen looks like, the one that uh, we developed recently. Uh, we should go to data workflow mapping and if I hide the menu structure then the idea of the screen is uh, uh, imagine that we would have a set of documents that uh, that the set was uploaded into the system and now we would like to go through each document one by one and do mapping and uh, labeling. So probably we would have a search option then we would have some actions, uh, additional actions that we could uh, do with each document. Maybe we would like to uh, remove document if we see that it's not useful or mark it and or so on. Then there's another uh, option like uh, area where we could work on a document from, from this uh, menu group over here. And then the idea is that we uh, should be able to select specific document and if this document is in progress and below over here the document should be rendered and uh, fields should be populated from OCR engine. Yeah, and because the screen have a table and the document then it's kind of nice to hide uh, a table when we don't need it, when we already selected the document. So we're using accordion component from Flowbyte and we can hide either documents or 
mapping uh, sections. And then as, as we got the document, we render document on the left side, then we could zoom in, zoom out, refresh. And on the right side, we have a data that uh, would come from OCR. So every field from, uh, from the document, which will be extracted by OCR, will be displayed in the form component. Uh, label will be, the text will be uh, the, the actual value that is extracted by OCR. And then uh, we should go through each uh, of the uh, values that were extracted and assign labels. So, so labels would be a set of labels would be predefined uh, in the metadata somewhere else, right? And then for this one, it's a, a business name. For example, this is the address. Uh, this is the waiter. This is uh, coffee uh, hot. This one is the receipt item. Then uh, 299 is uh, receipt item price, for example, and uh, total due, this one is invoice total label, and $48.53 uh, is invoice total. All right, so we have, let's say, uh, yeah, and this is prototype. This, is, this data is not yet coming from OCR. This is manually uh, typed and uh, just to build the UI. So the first column is data from the OCR. The second column is the key specification, because in such cases when we have um, received uh, item like coffee hot or diet coke, uh, then on the right side we have a price. So those two values are related for the key value pair, a price and item name. So this is what we see here. This $2.99 is received item price and is related to coffee hot to this one, for example. So this is the relationship for a key. And this uh, 48.53 uh, is the relationship with total due through, through this key. So, so later when uh, we'll build the training data set out of this data, uh, we'll be able to uh, suggest the model that, uh, uh, look, uh, those values are actually related for the key value pair. And uh, other fields like uh, business name, loaded coffee, uh, cafe is uh, doesn't uh, have any uh, key value pair relationship. It's a field on its own or, or address or waiter name, for example. And then we have another option to maybe want to ex exclude a certain field from a training set and we don't want to uh, run training on this uh, element. So we have a required option and for the address, uh, let's say that we don't want to include this uh, data into the training set, we, we say that required no, and it will be excluded from the uh, resulting data set. And then this is a submit button just to save to the uh, to the database, either to the um, data storage that comes out of the box with Django or to some external uh, database, either on premise or on cloud. Yeah, so this is the uh, mapping screen, right? And if you go to uh, PyCharm, uh, all this uh, implementation is done in mapping HTML. It's done using um, pure HTML with uh, classes uh, from Tailwind and Flowbyte. Basically, uh, copy pasting and adjusting from the uh, from the list of the components of the Flowbyte. It's very convenient and fast. Uh, especially for prototyping, and we see that we got uh, accordion. This is the first accordion element. This is the second one, and in accordion body, uh, in the first one, we got uh, uh, like a search bar and uh, additional commands. Then we got a table and navigation pagination for the table. For the second accordion in the body, we got uh, we got actually two. Uh, blocks or cards. In the first card we got image that uh, displays the document and the second uh, card displays the form, uh, all those values that uh, would come from the o OCR engine. Yeah, so this is it and yeah, just really quick update about our experience with the flow bytes. So far it's great. Uh, let's see how it will be later when we'll uh, uh, attach and try to render a real data, but I think it should be fine uh, because uh, it's all just HTML and uh, uh, pure HTML and additional classes from the Tailwind with the uh, also with the Flowbyte support. So thanks for watching and uh, 
see you next time. When uh, next time I have a new update and something interesting to share with you, I'll record a new video and I'll post it on YouTube. So stay tuned and bye.